Today's conversation, we are with Apollo Chamber Players, and we're going to blast off with an amazing... You, you guys are amazing because I've been following you online, and uh, you have so much to share. I, I really think that you guys are ambassadors of music, and we're so proud to have you in Houston. I don't want to go through all of the accolades. I, I think we'll, we'll touch upon that uh, as we talk in the interview. What I'd like to do, Matt, is, is introduce everybody and just get a little background in terms of some of your, uh, your music background background, your bio, what's kept you in music, and uh, let's start there. So, so Matthew Detrick, you are the founder and uh, artistic director. Can you tell us, just tell us a little bit, um, when did you guys start the chamber? I know you've been together since about 2012. Yeah, I founded Apollo in 2008, Eight. and it okay. was a, um, a, a collaborative concert with a, a friend of mine that I was in school with named Timothy Peters, and we wanted to play some chamber music. And we needed a cellist too, so we asked Matt Dudzik to play in this first inaugural concert. And Has fact, Matt always been with you? Matt's been with you a while. Since right? the beginning, yeah. 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 Pretty much the beginning. Right. Yeah. There you go. And we were classmates. At, at and class at Rice, yeah. 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 Um, but I think it's very important for you know people to know that you know we're classically trained musicians at the Shepherd School of Music. Um, I had an outside connection to the Houston community outside of our little music sphere. I, I, I started teaching a. Um, a, a Someone named Costa Papa Nicolau, he, he called me up and said, hey, I need some violin lessons. I played when I was a kid. Can you teach me violin? So I went and I, uh, I gave him some lessons, and he was very cordial, and he invited me. Were you in school me. at the time? Or I you... was out of school. I was out of school, and I had okay. done about 20 or so orchestral auditions. I thought okay. that was going to be my career yeah. um, to some success, but I never landed a big job that was outside of Houston. Um, so I was just looking for some fulfillment. Um, but this uh, Costa circle of friends, they wanted to hear, in particular, this piece called... Um, Box Chacon, and that's one of the you know most wonderful artistic creations of of all time um, by Johann, Johann Sebastian Bach. We put together a concert at Bethany Christian Church on Westheimer, you know, relatively small venue, um, and had about had forty or fifty people there in the beginning, which was you know a good showing for a first concert. Sure. We were excited. We just were like, hey, let's start a concert series. Let's start a nonprofit called Apollo Chamber Players. So is that uh, what the name? That's so, you know, and I remember thinking about the name, you know, because uh, you have to register something with the state, and I went to the courthouse, and I was like, hmm, you know, I, I really, I, I think Apollo has a nice connection to music because of, you know, it's the god of, uh, of music yeah, sure. and the arts, but also the connection to Houston and the space program. I've wanted to be an astronaut you, since you, I... You, you connected to that? I connected to that yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I, yeah. I read all my space books yeah. in my elementary school library. I and, saw the uh, picture. You saw, I the, saw picture? the picture? Yeah. I went to space camp when yeah. I was 13 years go. old. Yeah. And uh, anyway, so I think it all kind of converged and um, we became Apollo Chamber players. And uh, about four years later, we had a little bit of a personnel change and Whitney came on board and yeah. Annabelle at the same time. And uh, good we've been together since. Very yeah, good very good. So, so yeah. It, actually, it's kind of funny in the beginning. The quartet was three mats and a tim. <laughs> <laughs> Most musicians would they would they really thirst for that opportunity where you can yeah. play chamber on a continuous basis. And I think what you guys have created has been very very special, right? Because it's such an I, I look at you when I look at you and I research you and I follow your music. What stands out to me is that you're an ambassador to all types of genres, right? So you reach out to composers that are really not well known, I would say, not so much well known, but their music is kind of obscure to most people, right? And you guys just continue to reach out. So one of my, my, my thoughts is how do you continue the creative process? Because you reach out to so many different, you can be in South America today and Vietnam tomorrow and Cuba and Carnegie Hall. And I mean, there's just so much that you do. How do you keep the, what's the next evolution in the creative process for you guys? Well, they've taken a, a little bit of a step yeah. back. We're, we're ending our 20 by 2020 commissioning project that we started in 2014. And, and in many ways, this project has brought us to where we are today. Um, so the mission of, the aim of this project was to commission 20 new multicultural works right. by the end of the decade. And uh, when we started the project, we were, our budget was much, much smaller than it was now. We, people didn't know us for commissioning music. Um, we were trying to get our foot in the door, you know, and then arts community here and build an audience. So uh, we got, um, in January 2014, we were awarded a Houston Press Masterminds Award, which was the most prestigious thing we had been awarded to that, to, to that time, and uh, it came with $2,000 in seed money. Again, a, a substantial amount of money uh, at that time, 
We could do anything we wanted with this money, and so what we did. But oh, there know, were no we, restrictions. There no restrictions good. on this yeah, money. Yeah. Um, we talked about uh, using the money to start this project, and you know, I remember going to our board and saying, you know, "This is this is what we want to do. We want to do this big project over the next six years, and we have no idea how much it's going to cost." You know, and I started to quote some composer. They must have loved that. They're like, um, they, okay. you know, we had, we, had, we had the board. Our board was wonderful, and they had our best interest at heart. Um, but I remember I talked to uh, a composer. One of the most famous composers that's alive. Um, I won't quote his name, but his fee was twenty five thousand oh. dollars for a five minute piece. <laughs> that's a little unusual. Yeah. Um, but I remember I, I was so excited that I actually connected with this composer, and I told my board that. And I don't think that helped in the uh, the discussion to, <laughs> for them to uh, sign off on this big project. But anyway, we were we were, we were um, uh, resilient, and we wanted you know kind of stubborn, I guess, in a way, um, and wanted to do this project. So uh, they signed off on that. In in the six years that we've done the project, you know, like you mentioned, we've commissioned pieces from Vietnam, Syria, Ukraine, all over the, all world. Over the world, Turkey. Uh, we've helped nurture young artists' careers, emerging careers, and we've also, you know, have commissions by multiple Grammy winners. So That's right. it's been a very encompassing project. You're ending and the, at the end, and the end yeah. end yeah. of it. I mean, I, I like to say this in in, in in terms of an entrepreneurship angle is that we started with two thousand dollars. And, it, and over the course of the project, we raised over a quarter of a million dollars in project costs. So Bro. Yeah. a lot yeah. of that and m the majority of that money has come from uh, private donors private and individual donors. donors that you know, have, have uh, asked for us to honor relatives that have passed of a certain ethnicity, Croatian. Uh, we're doing an Armenian commission Armenian, the, yeah. at the end of this month that's honoring um, this wonderful uh, donor of ours and patron named Pamela Auburn. As her grandfather it, it, it passed away and she wanted to do something to honor his memory through Armenian folk music. And uh, it's, it, it's, just, it's just been very special to kind of connect with the community in a way that they, they, they want to give back um, with something timeless and leave That's a legacy. Right. Let's talk a little bit about Houston because we've seen it. You've all been here. We've all been here a little bit. We're all kind of mostly transplants. But you've, what do you think about Houston, the arts program and the arts foundation? I mean, it seems like Houston has really thrown not only resources, but really just its its whole emphasis around arts. And one of the programs that you guys play in and that we've interviewed them as well as Harmony in the Air, right, at the airports, mm -hmm. which is pretty amazing, mm -hmm. right? It's a, And you got to be, they're very selective about who they bring in as well. Yeah. Um, so talk a little bit about what we, have you seen seen Houston evolve as far as, uh, as, as, as a music uh, and arts? I like the state. Oh, okay. Annabelle's been the longest. <laughs> yeah, I, I got here in, yeah, in 1990, well, 92, then 95 wow. full time. Yeah. And, yeah. and yes, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I, you know, when I got here, downtown Houston was like a, a wasteland, basically. Yeah. And I, just to see the change in the art scene mm -hmm. has been wonderful. And so now, like this, the thing that is so special to me, is how many different things I can do. I right. can I can play opera. I can play ballet. I can play in a symphony. I can play chamber music. I can play baroque music. I yes. can, you know, it's 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 like an endless plethora of choices that you can yeah. do. And I, and also the fact that I feel welcome in any environment. Um, you know, being being Mexican, I I, I don't have I don't I don't have a lot of um, Latin colleagues, <laughs> so. I've been, it's fortunate enough to be able to like immerse myself in this arts community that is Houston that, and that we have the opportunity to perform for all these different people from all over the world and just bring them together. Yeah, I think it's right. What do you think? I was, well, I, yeah. I, of course I completely agree. I, and I think it, it's important to state that I don't think Apollo would exist in a city outside of Houston. Outside of Houston, interesting. And I say that not only because of the multicultural element to Houston. I mean, it's, it's really part and parcel of what this city is about, but um, also the philanthropic aspect, too, that there's a kind of a, um, something embedded in the culture. There's philanthropy embedded in the culture of Houston, and I would be remiss not to mention uh, a mentor of ours named uh, Howard Peeper. And in fact, so after I, to continue my story a little bit, if I, if I may, I, when I graduated from Rice with my graduate degree, um, I obviously didn't have much money at all, so I taught, and I lived in a small, like, 200-square-foot garage apartment in the back of this gentleman's house, and he was a widower. He was, you know, he needed a little bit of help with yard work mm -hmm. and taking care of his, his, his parakeet. He had a 45-year-old 
um, African, African Grey, Grey that, that had a, a vocabulary of a hundred words, uh, and that was his baby. And uh, he was a big supporter of the symphony and the Alley Theater oh, and the opera. Good. And he was, did you know he, that before? Did, or did um, you know I, I did. I mean, yeah, and, and actually, yeah. he he was very generous in offering his his space as small as it was. <laughs> Uh, to, to students that were you yeah. know kind of getting their foot in the door yeah. in the scene, so I got to know him very well. He became kind of like a you know a, a, a surrogate grandfather uh, to me, and he was one of Apollo's first board members. When oh, he wow. passed away in 2013, okay. he uh, left some money for a foundation. Fantastic. We got a very substantial gift um, a couple of years after that, after we had started our commissioning project. And to be honest, like this substantial gift, we've been able to kind of use that to help fundraise um, for the project since then. And sure. um, he's left a really wonderful legacy through yeah. his generosity. That's special. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, and there was another gentleman named uh, Fritz Ademeyer who was real um, instrumental early on when we were getting our... Um, doing our formation, getting our tax exemption from the federal government. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's that's one of those things, like, they don't teach you how to do that in music school. They don't teach you that, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, ending up having a connection with him and just through a conversation saying, hey, we'd like to go forward with this. Do you know anything about right. how to do it? Right. And then getting the guidance from someone like that um, is it real important. Is important. And to your to your viewers too, yes. if they're if any of them are trying to start their own nonprofits, Absolutely. right? Yeah. He yeah. ended up commissioning uh, our Croatian inspired commission um, in honor of his mother, I believe. His yeah. mother, um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, so he was very close to hearts, and so still, oh, I mean, I, I feel yeah. well. Yeah. You know, I feel like if I was dean of a music school, I would make you know biz the business component of being an artist like a central component yeah, yeah. um to anyone's education because it's, it's just so important um that being said the shepherd school has you know since we've been in school um and actually i i need to credit someone a teacher that taught a course called business and music um i think it's the only business oriented course in the shepherd school whitney took it i took it and in that class one of our exercises was you know, to look at yourself 10 years in the future and see where you would be. Um, and since that time, you know, we've been back to talk to the class and talk to the students um, about our story. And I remember we found, we dug up our own like 10 year things. And my, my, I, mine was very uninspiring. Um, but, but the point is that like she, she uh, motivated us to think outside of kind of yes. what, you know, one track would be, like one lane of our career. Yeah. So I think that's important too. That's a great Her name is Janet right? Rarick. Janet Rarick. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. We thank, thank you. Jerry. We so were much. just uh, that was fun. a lot of fun, and uh, just keep.